Now, there's one thing I love more than Megatron. Internet beef. And ever since Kendrick and Drake decided to Bluetooth punch each other with lyrics, the whole internet has... I'm kidding, by the way. I don't think she really cared, but anyways. Ever since they decided to Bluetooth punch each other, start this whole drama, it's been really entertaining for most of us. Literally everyone was going like, oh, oh, then the next track, oh, then... Uh, Kendrick drops not like us. Oh, and it's been requested by many of you for me to talk about this whole situation. I've never talked about it because I'm not really into pop culture. It's not my niche. I don't enjoy talking about rappers beefing with other rappers. That's different people who do different types of content. But it doesn't mean that I haven't been in the gym or in, or in the car going like, what, 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 what? Damn, fuck him up. What, 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 what? Damn, fuck him up. You bitch, like you tired, trying to suck a core, and it's probably a minor. Whoa, 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 whoa. And even though I haven't talked about the situation, it doesn't mean I haven't been keeping up with the drama. I have no job. I sit all day at home and scroll through the internet and just discover beefs. Like I said, I didn't choose the drama life. It chose me. And at this point, everyone is aware of Kendrick and Drake's situation, how it started, how it's ending, how it's going. Literally, my grandma under the grave, rest in peace, she knows what's happening with the whole beef. Even Taylor Swift's fans are updated with the situation. And after last night, I think it is time for me to talk about it because history has been made. Kendrick, after all this time, he decided to make an appearance and perform the one and only song, Not Like Us. I want to give a quick shout out to the Amazon music cameraman for that beautiful shot of wop, 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 wop with, with the switch cameras. That was absolutely beautiful. And this song has gotten so popular that in 50 years time, when we're grandparents, we are going to be going wop, wop, wop. It is going to be remembered for like a very, very long time. Just like Ice Cube dissed NWA after they started whole beefing with each other. It's going to be an iconic song. And even before Kendrick performed this song, this song has been trending all over the place. Literally, you go to a club, you go to a school, you go to a church. It's going to be like, wop, 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 damn, fuck him up. It's been going all over the place and people absolutely lost their mind after he performed it and it's been like the moment everyone's been waiting for people have waited weeks for kendrick to finally come and perform this and it was absolutely mind-blowing for everyone and it got to a point that he didn't perform it only one time as a matter of fact he performed it five times he sang the same song for five times now i love the song i listen to it almost on a daily basis but five times kendrick first time mind-blowing second time woo! one more time one more time third time sure fourth time meh, fifth time brother sing another song it's like they went to a free buffet restaurant and they kept on eating the same food brother it gets it gets tiring Wallah. and if you're wondering who are these people on stage dancing awkwardly there are not fans who just kendrick brought on stage to experience the Certified Loverboy, Certified Drake. Anita Maxwin. These are actually East Coast, West Coast rappers. Bloods, Crips, Water, Pepsi. All the gangs that just decided to just like gather up all together and they all perform. This has been like a very long concert that just shit ton of like big creators like Taylor the Creator also came and performed. A lot of creators. Dr. Dre was there as well. And why did they all gather up and decided to unite? Because as you all know, Bloods and Cribs, not so much good histories. Like East Coast, West Coast, they absolutely hate each other. If you watch an NWA movie and you watch some, you know, gang uh, documentaries, you know what I'm talking about. They all united together because Drake dissed the East Coast, West Coast after he started using AI songs of Tupac and Snoop Dogg. He put Tupac singing first, then put Snoop Dogg AI singing second, then he puts himself, this was a diss track for Kendrick Lamar toasting him basically and people were not happy with it and even Snoop Dogg responded to this on his snap Instagram they did what when how are you sure and 100% Snoop Dogg has never heard of AI in his life after they posted this and heard it he was like wait was was I was I there 
Was I high? I, I don't remember. What the fuck? How? Did they come and record me while I was sleeping? He has no idea. He has no clue how this thing, how this whole thing happened. And even <clears throat> Shook Knight, who owns the, you know, the merchandise of uh, Tupac, he also responded to Drake saying that he will be suing him if he does not remove that AI video. And, and I think it was a month and a half ago when Drake posted this. And within a week, he removed it. This was Shook Knight's message to Drake. You know, people do what young people do. It's your own turn. But my little homie Pop, you wasn't no joke. Being, you damn sure ain't no joke. It's painful watching him speak, but basically he goes on and he says, if you don't remove it, I'm going to sue your goofy ass. Now, this is some extra information for those of you who think they just started beefing recently. They were actually really close in 2011 and 2012 after they did a lot of collaboration. But in 2013, their relationship appeared to change after Kendrick featured on Big Sean's song Control, in which called out Drake and many other rappers, including Pusha, Mac Miller, Asa Brocky. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you. And in 6th of October, 2023, Drake and J. Cole released a collab first-person shooter, which they said, me and Drake and Lamar, we are a big three of rap. We are the like the top Gs. And then Lamar in March 22, after like a few months, he responded and saying, there is no big three, my friends. It is just big me. I am above all of you, okay? He thinks it was a sneak dissing he thinks they were making fun of him and then that was a time where j cole decided to you know what guys peace you you boys have your fight I'm, I'm going to go take a break and go sit by the beach and just record some songs and after that all throughout march until mid-may the whole beef was just going histories in rap culture was made this one was going like you a bitch this one was like no you a bitch then i don't know kendrick was like you have a secret daughter that you abandoned. Then Drake was like, what, 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 what secret daughter? And then Drake was like, you beat your wife. And then Kendrick was like, you tickle kids. Now at the beginning, Drake dropped some like really good songs, but then midway and towards the end, it was just very mid. But Kendrick was going at it. He literally just woke up one day and he was dropping like three songs a day. There has been a lot of allegations against Drake, especially with the part, the tickling kids part. I'm even surprised Kendrick never said anything about Drake sitting on his, in his like big ass plane and just shaking his kumba in his bed, shaking his snake and traumatizing the world. That would have been a fun, funny diss, but uh, I would understand why he wouldn't because it'll be probably gay. But back to the tickling kids part, if you don't know what he was talking about, this is an incident that happened back in 2010. Drake with a 17 year old fan where at the time he was 23 years old, and he was just grinding on her, just dropping her and kissing her. And it's also been his relationship with Millie Bobby Brown, the main star of Stranger Things in 2018 when they met up and they drank. For some reason, a 31-year-old man decided to have a relationship with a 14-year-old. They've been texting back and forth about boy problems that she's having. I don't understand why a 31-year-old would want to talk that. Yeah, sure, celebrity friends, but the age gap is just way too much. If she was 19, 20, sure, even they've been spending time in uh in drake's yacht just drake and her alone just chilling without any adults present what about your relationship with drake tell me about your friendship how uh, did this all come about i love him i met him in australia and um he's honestly so fantastic and a great friend and a great uh great role model you know we text we just text each other the other day and he was like i miss you so much i was like i miss you more he's coming to atlanta so i'm definitely gonna go and see him i'm so excited yeah what advice does he give you like what does he say uh, about boys, he helps me. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. He's wonderful. I love What's him. His advice with boys. You know, that stays in the text messages. <laughs> Out of all the people in the world, she decides to take boy advice 
from Drake. Anita Maxwell. It is the worst thing you can do, literally. And mid-May, Drake decided to make a post on Instagram saying that good times time to vibe on this summer meaning that he's done with the beef he just wants to move on with his life and ever since he's been acting like that ex-girlfriend after you break up and they're post on instagram a lot in parties and saying i'm so happy even though they're like miserable inside because 100 percent drake is crying after that after he find out that everyone even his friends are vibing to the they not like us the track that he the track that literally took the world by storm. This is very iconic where Kendrick brought everyone together on stage. All the rappers, all the blood, cribs, sugars, all the gangs. And 17,000 people witnessed history. Now, just looking at Drake, you can tell that he's a very sensitive guy. And I'm sure he pre prepared himself in when Kendrick decides to come out and perform this live. But I'm not sure he did everything in his training i'm sure he lashed out and he's sitting in the corner and crying and he's like fuck everyone everyone's a winner in this beef the only two people who lost in this beef is drake mainly and then metro booming i, I still feel bad for him i feel like that was the best line out of drake's whole song it's a 20 v1 metro shut your ass Metro, shut your ass up and drop, drop some drums. And even though Metro now is like, Woo, guys, we won, we won. Don't fuck with us. We are the OGs. 100%, it still hurts him to this day. And it is going to hurt him in the coming future. He's going to go home and be like, I'm more than a DJ, bro. I'm fuck, fuck Drake. At this point, I really feel bad for Drake. But this is a very important lesson for everyone like in the rap industry to never fuck with Kendrick. Bro is a natural. He's going to diss you, your family, your grandma, your great grandma, your whole darkest secrets that you buried 50 years ago. He's going to come out with it and just diss you in like making this song in like five minutes. The beef was really entertaining and funny to watch. I guess that's about it. That was the final cut that everyone's been waiting for with this concert. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. <laughs> and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you do not click on one of these videos and watch it all the way to the end, you're gay. That's on you. Straightness is superior in three, two, one.